Hey guys, welcome back, and we got a hypochondria, there's nothing we can do, really. I mean, there's a green one there, which we haven't got yet, but probably can't do that one yet. Uh, any options I'm not taking yet? Uh, start that one. No. Got all the options there. I forget what that one was on actually. What's this one? Like I'm still in a rainbow. I miss him so much. Adventure of a big brother. There was another one down here which. Interesting. That one has consequences for both those two, for obvious reasons. Very much farther than ever, I think. Let's try this one, shall we? The mountain was called the Shuanglong Mountain. The name meant a mountain with two dragons. And weather like this, one could see the most beautiful rainbow of a mountain when the rain stopped. The rain was beating down on a bus window. You watched the view outside of a blur. The only thing recognised was the blue, the blurry greenish mountain that was getting closer and closer. He's got cancer, stomach cancer, late stage. He's got cancer, stomach cancer, late stage. He's got cancer, stomach cancer, late stage. This Yang's words echoing in my head. Why didn't he tell me? Why would we just leave like this in secret? I thought we were released friends. Once again, I've been left all alone. In the foot of a mountain, the ranger told me that hiking had been temporarily suspended due to a high probability of mudslides. I managed to sneak past him when I wasn't paying too much attention. I was hiking once at a time, along the wet and slippery steps. My school uniform had gotten soaked inside and out. My shoes were covered in mud. I looked up. I was maybe 100 metres away from the summit? No. It should only be 50 metres. A gust of wind at the mountain top blew me off balance. It's blown over like a young, weak and small tree. I rolled down the steps along the mud and rocks. I tried to, I tried to grab onto anything I could touch, with trees or grass. We all snapped. I was rolling down faster and faster. I found myself leaving aside the ground, I was flying. And then I saw the valley beneath me. I pulled a pen in my pocket. 
step forward a bit as hard as I could. Murky time to a mud and rock slushed down towards the mountain. Some I stuck a pen into a crack and the rocks on the cliff. The taunt was too powerful. I felt weightlessness. I've never done bungee jumping before. I imagine it would probably feel something like this. I was falling. I kept falling. After what felt like an eternity, my body finally touched the ground. I could feel something sticking out of my nose and my ears. It hurt so bad, so, so bad. I never thought this would be the end of me. I didn't want it to end like this. There's so many things I hadn't told him yet. In this modern life, there isn't anything that can't be delivered right to a door. Yet, despite this, there are still things that are beyond our control. For instance, the shipping fee. Or that, to qualify for the shipping, you had to buy so many filler items, hoping that would be useful one day. Or that, the tissues always went out as soon as expected. Always wrote down one needed on a shopping list. Then, every Tuesday, I would use a list when I went shopping in the nearby supermarket. I would usually go between supper and evening at discount hours. This way I could avoid the afternoon rush hours, as well as the health wives who swarmed in for discounted goods. It could be done within 30 minutes. However, it wasn't a good day to go out. The weather was extremely bad that night. As soon as I opened the door, huge raindrops smacked my face like pebbles. Thunder exploded as it was right off on top of my head. I opened my umbrella. It was such a stormy evening, and I heard him speak of things like Madden like this. And just when I had finished the thought, Big Brother, could you come play with me? I suddenly heard a childish voice near me. I was so startled when I stumbled one step back. I stopped and looked closer. Like it was a young boy I'd never seen before. Hey kid, you can play outside and remain like this. You should go home. I hurried past him with a further, further thought. I just recently become a target of some malicious gossip. The mastermind behind it was an elementary school kid. As a result, I've been feeling easily set off every time I saw these tiny mischievous young children. Hair was something didn't feel right. Two blocks later, a young girl jumped in front of me holding a flowery umbrella. Then a crisp voice. Big brother, could you come play with me? Little girl, you are really cute, but big boy is not going to play with you. Leave me alone, all you cute boys and girls. I'm not in the mood. Have your brother alone and keep walking. However, very mysterious ran into several more children of similar ages, all of them wearing different clothes. Yet they all looked at me with an identical innocent smile and said exactly the same thing. It was so freaky. I was almost walking as fast as an Olympic race walker. Just a little further, once I turned around that corner, I'll be at the supermarket. <laughs> but right into someone, fell to the ground and my umbrella slipped out my hand. It wasn't a curious time, but someone who was very skinny. Couldn't see anything but a dark figure. Thunder kept booming the clouds and suddenly a blind bolt flashed across the sky and almost lit up the entire green sky. The person was covered from head to toe in dark clothes underneath a clear raincoat. His face was mostly hidden behind a mask. I see a pair of ice cold eyes was glimmering from a flash of lightning. I felt a chill climb up my spine. Big brother. A voice from, came from behind my mask. I couldn't tell if it belonged to a woman or a man, but I knew it was the most terrifying voice I'd ever heard. Could you come play with me? I climbed up from the ground, turned around, and ran as fast as I could, without even picking up the umbrella. And yet I heard footsteps following me from exactly the same place as mine, and laughter. Who is that? Why are they chasing me? What does it want with me? The thoughts kept getting scary and scary in my head. I tried to shut them out and kept running. No matter how fast or how far I ran, footsteps and laughter were still right behind me. My mother had always complained I never exercised. She said I ever ran into a bad guy, I would be dead because I would be running too slow. Mother, I promise I never failed to listen to her again. My legs were getting heavier and heavier. The footsteps behind me were getting closer and closer. Suddenly my left hand was firmly grasped. Turn around enough to tell her and gaze right back into his cold eyes once again. There's no way those eyes could belong to a normal human being. The dark figure grabbed my wrist tightly. The strength was way too powerful for its skinny frame. Then covered my nose and mouth with damp cloth. Tired of exhaustion, suddenly so washed over me. If it went dark, I'd passed out. When I woke up, I realised I couldn't move. Wait, why was I tied to a table with my arms and legs played out? Where are my clothes gone? Big brother? I heard a shilling voice right next to my ear. The masked person had a shiny scalp in his hands at the time. He kept brushing the back of a cold scalp over my thighs. His other hand was holding a gossip newspaper that had a picture of my butt. Big brother? I heard it like little boys' life ups. What the hell? I tried to protest, but my body felt as heavy as a piece of cast iron. The only sound I could make was some random noises. Actually, I like them too. What? So a silver reflection flashed through the air. 
pain was so intense that even my numb body could ignore it. Like a warm red liquid splashed all over my body. The only thought I had before completely lost consciousness was... Damn, I shouldn't have gone out. This doesn't look promising, does it? Try swapping them completely. The sweat of my palm and glued my hand tightly to a pen while I was just stuck in his shoulder. It showed no signs of pain. Who the hell was this person? Fell down into a mud and tore into a mud and sword and the ether swept both off a cliff. Mud and sword kept splashing up onto my face and into my nose. I began to have trouble breathing and suddenly something struck me in my forehead and I blacked out. When we woke up, I realised we were in the hospital. I couldn't move at all. My entire body had been wrapped up like a mummy. The nurse told me that a team of road repair workers had found me. I had broken numerous bones all over my body, but none of my organs had been damaged. It was almost a miracle. A doctor in a white coat came in soon after a nurse left. He was wearing a mask, but I couldn't face his face. With a glistening scalp in his hand. Big brother, we've had to start the procedure now. My heart skipped a few beats. I felt like I'd already died. I thought I must be in a wild dream. I'd seen too many movies of similar plot. The heroine was about to fall off a cliff. The hero was able to catch her at the last moment. And yet we were not the hero and heroine of that kind of movie. The wind and rain kept getting stronger. He grabbed a small tree next to a cliff with his left hand. His tiny trunk was shaking more and more violently in relentless wind. I was so scared I could all I could sense that I wasn't the only one. Find a crisp slapping sound broke the silence between us. We fell off a cliff, holding onto each other's hands as tight as we could. I was falling, I kept falling. The last one a moment, I finally managed to come through enough courage. Mr. Wen, I love you. I didn't hear a response, the rain and tears already blurred my eyes and I couldn't see his face. Shoulder. I was screwed. I had to run into a real psychopath. Yeah, you get the same bad ending. Not gonna read it out again. Skipped a few beats. Felt like I'd already died. I thought it must be a wild dream. Seen too many movies of similar plot. Can't have a murkiness. You could just have a mud and rocks. Not sure how I found my strength, but I stepped forward at the last moment. I feel my heel just miss a sliding mud and tired of mud and falling off a slope on the roadside. A landslide? A mud and sword and if a mass person suddenly began to move rapidly as if I'd just been awoken by the thunderous explosion in the sky. The mass person was sucked into a torrent and swept down a cliff into a distance. Goddess of Fortune must have already heard my call for help. Lucky me. I had flooding to calm down and realised a new problem. Where the hell was I? I eventually managed to stop attacking and get back home, even though I was completely lost. Warm bed and my soft sheets seemed like friends from another lifetime when I got home. They sucked me instantly as if I were a black hole. The only thought I had before I looked completely lost consciousness was I shouldn't have gone out. Without swapping these. My heart skipped a few beats. I felt like I'd already died. I thought I must be in a wild dream. I 
and just cut his hand or something and say, Let go of me or I'll drag you down to... However, I was no heroin. The blood was being washed away by the rain. Flowed onto my hand and dropped onto my face. I took a pen into the back of his hand, but it had been blown away by the heavy wind. This wasn't a movie. I would drag him down, definitely would. But I didn't have the courage to tell him to let go of me. I was such a coward. Hold on! Keep your eyes on me! He held me even tighter. The rain and tears blurred my eyes, but I couldn't see his face. I'm sorry, I'm so scared. So scared of being left alone. Mackenzie seemed to have heard my thoughts. Don't be scared, I would never leave you alone, ever. He grabbed a tree next to me with his left hand and leaned back. The tree was already bending at a dangerous angle. My body was jerked upwards. The little tree snapped in half, but at the same instant he pulled me into his broad chest. He locked me in his strong arms. I felt a warmth I had felt in a long time. I couldn't think of anything to say. He didn't say anything either. Or maybe he did say something, but it was drowned out by the rain. Hey, you got S, S ranks. You got some new letters, and we'll read them next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.